all stand together. We're going to start by singing song 324, Wonderful Grace of Jesus. Let's lift it up together as we sing, Wonderful Grace of Jesus, Greater Than All of My Sin. Wonderful Grace of You may be seated. What a joy to be here. Choir, thank you for singing that, Living by Faith. What a wonderful, wonderful old song. And I'm so grateful that you sang it for us this morning. I love to hear our choir sing. And thank you for singing that song, Wonderful Grace of Jesus. Kind of a, a, a little bit of a high song for this early in the morning, but we're thankful that you sang it. Thank you for participating. And we're looking forward to a good time. I want to um, just give a couple of words of announcement in case you hadn't heard. Uh, Miss Judy Whitson went home to be with the Lord just the other night, and uh, so we are certainly praying for that family, asking the Lord to bless them and comfort in a special way. Then we are going to have the uh, service here at the church on Wednesday, 
the visitation will be from 4 to 7 here in the auditorium, and then we'll have that as a service at 7 o'clock. And so uh, Miss Judy had wanted the choir to sing, so choir, if you're a choir member, we'd love to have you. If you want to sing in the choir, we'd certainly love to do that. You can talk to Brother Daniel. We uh, are looking forward to a good time together as we celebrate the life of uh, Miss Judy Whitson. The burial will be the next day on Thursday at 10 uh, up at Hamlet Dobson across from the airport. So please be in prayer for that family. We're also praying for James Ketron's family. He too went home to be with the Lord this week. And uh, so that service is the visitation from 5 to 6 tonight at Oak Hill up off Lynn Garden. And then the service is at 6 o'clock. And so please be in prayer for uh, Brother James's family if you would. And we certainly want to just lift them up in prayer. I want to get those announcements out of the way. I've got some other announcements that we'll have in just a little bit, but I'm going to ask Brother Dan Kovac if he doesn't mind to come. He's our good missionary, and all of our missionaries, we love him, and we certainly love what he is doing. I want to ask him to come and introduce himself and his wife, and then tell a little bit, though, but we're, we're going to have him here with us tonight to learn more about his ministry. It's been a good long time since he's been here, and we are thankful that the Lord allowed him to come back through, and I challenge you to be here tonight to get some information of how you can pray. Brother Dan, come and greet everybody, please. Thank you, Pastor. With you this morning, we are Dan and Dee Kowak. Uh, my wife is down over here. She'll just stand up, and uh, she she's my favorite lady in the auditorium this morning. <laughs> I, and uh, we we've been in Korea since June of 2014. It was 10 years ago, and uh, we're excited about what the Lord is doing uh, with us over there in Korea. Our first church in Gangneung, Faith Baptist Church. We've turned over to a national pastor, and they're doing well, and we praise the Lord for that. Uh, the Lord in 2021 moved us down to Daegu, South Korea, and uh, we're now in a multicultural ministry. And uh, a couple weeks ago, we had a Korean man uh, get saved at the church there, and we praise the Lord for that. Excited about getting back over there and uh, being able to start working with him and discipling him. Um, his girlfriend is from South Africa, and just a little bit of the diversity that we have there. We also have the U.S. military. And so I just want to remind you, we do have prayer cards in the back table. If you would like to take one of those, we would appreciate it. And remember to pray for us. Um, it's exciting what the Lord is doing. We ask that you'd come back this evening as we give a report um, on the ministry there in South Korea. But we certainly want to give you a sincere thank you for um, just supporting us, praying for us and holding the ropes while we've been serving the Lord in South Korea. Let's go to the Lord in prayer for this morning's service. Father, we thank you for all that you've done. Lord, we thank you for uh, Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church, Lord, and the ministry here. Father, we thank you for just all that you've done. Father, I pray now that you would remove any hindrances that would cause us not to hear from your word this morning. Father, any distractions, I pray that you'd help us to put those aside. And Father, help us to tune into your word, to listen to the pastor this morning as he preaches your word. And Father, I pray that you would challenge us. Lord, I pray that you would draw us into a closer image of Christ. And Lord, I pray that you would just be magnified as we worship you this morning. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. To be rich and good looking. I want to be rich and good looking. I need you to challenge me. I need you to challenge me to be rich and good works. To be rich and good works. I'll be focused on building my career at all costs. I'll need you to show me how to put my family ahead of work. I'll seek my own comfort and joy. I'll seek my own comfort and joy. I'll need you to teach me to honor God. I'll need you to teach me to honor God with my time and resources. I'll want to avoid hard conversations. I want to avoid hard conversations. I'll need you to show me how to speak the truth in love in love i'll find myself wanting to please the crowd i'll find myself wanting to please the crowd i'll need you to remind me that i should obey god that i should obey god i'll look for happiness in many different places i'll need you to show me that joy is found in following christ I want to treat girls how the world tells me to. I need you to show me how to honor them with all my actions. I'll find myself stuck in bad habits. I'll need you to show me the way out. I'll need you to show me the way out. I'll need you, Dad. I'll need you, Dad. I need you, Dad. I need you, Dad. To point me toward Christ when no one else will. To point me to Christ when no one else will. 
Well, I wanted to say to all the fathers in the house and those that are listening that uh, happy Father's Day, and we're certainly thankful that you are joining us here at Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church. If you're via live stream, thank you again, and I uh, challenge you to just listen for the message. I trust to be a blessing. If you're listening on the radio, this is Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church in Gray, Tennessee, and we say happy Father's Day to all the fathers that are here with us today. And we've got a special gift for you. Some of you saw it on the way in, but uh, in case you didn't, I, I'm pleased to announce that every man, doesn't have to be a father, all men 18 and above. We've got them. I thought, well, how can we have a special gift for you? And we found one that I think will be a great, great addition for you, and that is duct tape. <laughs> so, thank you, thank you. I, I knew you would think this was a genius idea. So, my pastor says if it moves and it's not supposed to, you use duct tape. If it doesn't move, it's supposed to, then you need WD-40. So that may be next year. We'll see. You come back next year and we'll find out. But uh, we've got a roll of duct tape for every, every man, 18 and above. Uh, the ushers will have you. It's on the table back there. And that's just something uh, that you will enjoy, I, ho I hope, anyways. Now, I said I wasn't going to say this, but uh, he already left anyways. Dolan Edwards was at the first service. And he said, thank you for the wife silencing device. <laughs> I cannot believe he said it. But I've told 14 people since he told me, but I couldn't believe he said it to begin with. So uh, we are excited. Thank you for being here. I'm going to preach toward that end in just a little bit about fathers. And uh, of course, hopefully it'll be applicable to everybody because there's so much of a neglect in training and teaching and mentoring, discipling, call it what you will, just taking the, the next generation and showing them how God would have them lead, live. You say, Pastor, you seem, like, you seem like everything comes back to Jesus Christ, and it does. I mean, even the, when the Bible says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might, it says, whether therefore you eat or drink, do all the glory of God. We, we are teaching young people, and some of you are teaching grandkids, a few of you are teaching great-grandkids to do what they do with their sincerity and their heart, and then make sure that it comes back to glorifying God. It all does come back to the Lord Jesus Christ. So thank you for being here for Father's Day. This is a Father's Day announcement, but I, somebody told me that uh, Brother Jess and Miss Lana Phipps have been married 58 years today. So praise the Lord. Congratulations back there for that. And uh, what a wonderful, wonderful announcement. And then, uh, not only only that, but uh, this, this past Friday was a special day, and uh, sort of different things here at that church happened. Well, it's for church members, I should say, but we also are so grateful for our pastor emeritus and preacher Lassie turned 92 this past Friday. And uh, so, if you didn't mind, Daniel, would you help me out here? Uh, a card in here for, um, we had somebody help us with um, the amount, but for a week's worth of groceries, a Food City card, but then forget about all those, we've got the Nutty Buddies for Preacher Lastly. So, <laughs> Miss Lastly, now let him eat them. We, uh, we always have to worry, Miss Lastly, she likes her health food, but now we've got to let him eat those things, Miss Lastly. That's good, good for him. He's, he's gone on this long, so praise the Lord for that. But uh, Preacher Lastly is a great uh, treasure to our church, and we're thankful for him and all the labor that he's put in over all these good years and continues to uh, affect people and encourage them and challenge them, and so we thank God for, for him. Well, I wanted to just give a couple of other announcements. If you come to this Sunday school class, uh, we are also having some transition here. Brother Steve Mullins has taught it now for a long time. And uh, Brother Steve, I think, has been teaching Sunday school, not here at Buffalo Ridge all these 40 years, but for 40-some years. But uh, he came and told me here recently that um, the Lord's moving in his life, and he's retiring this from, from teaching. He'll still fill in. We're not going to let him off that easy, but uh, we'll still get him in our classes. But he uh, is seeing what the Lord would have him do. Of course, you know his son Levi's over in England, and they've got a lot going on there. And then they've also got a lot going on uh, down in Africa with some mission that they're trying to establish. And who knows, he may uh, be able to travel some more and do those different things. But we're thankful to uh, Brother Steve. But in this room, Brother Steve, we've got something for you. Daniel, you mind again? Just a gift card from us. Thank you, Brother Steve, for the work here. And uh, we're grateful for the class that's in here. And if you'd like to come try it out, um, then you're certainly welcome to. He's handed over to a, a, another able teacher. Brother Philip Talbert will be teaching the class in here. He actually taught the victory class today. 
And uh, so he'll come over here next week and start. So if you'd like to come, try the Gideon class out. We have uh, several adult classes. This one, the Victory uh, Foundations and Home Builders, and uh, then Berean and the Heritage Men. So you, you feel free. We always want to be where you find a spot that the Lord leads you in because I'm a big believer. You need to get into a small, smaller group so that you can have some uh, camaraderie and some fellowship and some prayer requests back and forth. So if you want to come back in and try Gideon, we'd certainly, uh, certainly uh, encourage you to do that. So those are a couple of things that we wanted to make you aware of. This Tuesday for the church uh, family, there is a visitation for Bible school and outreach. Uh, Brother Daniel's got pizza coming, 6.30 over at the Family Life Center. And you may say, I don't know exactly how to do all that. Simple as can be. They, we've got a set of maps that may have 15 to 20 homes on them or something and, um, and invite cards to the Bible school because it's coming a week from tomorrow. And so if you could come give us 45 minutes, uh, the pizza, Brother Daniel's got that taken care of. We'll come and eat and then just head out 45 minutes to an hour, however long it takes you. Or if you don't want to go one of those streets, but you want to go to another area, then that's fine as well. But it's uh, just so we get out and invite folks to vacation Bible school, invite their children. So th that's happening this Tuesday at 630. And so there's several things going on there. And uh, then um, let me see, then of course, there's a VBS, a Vacation Bible School meeting tonight following their service, I believe. And so if you're involved in that, then we certainly appreciate you um, being, being there. So those are enough of uh, those announcements. I just want to keep you up to date on a few things. And we're certainly glad to have a lot of things happening here at the church. I did want to mention that there's one person, uh, a family member told me about today, uh, just one of our church members having a tough time with some mental issues, ask us to pray. When you think of that unspoken, pray for that brother, that the Lord would help them. But I uh, want to get those announcements out to you. Brother Dan, do you know of anything else we need? All right. Well, why don't you come and lead us? We're going to sing hymn number 628, My Savior's Love. If you're able to, stand one last time for us today. And uh, I stand amazed in the presence. You're singing so well. Thank you for that. Let's sing this song together. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus now. wonderful, amazing love. Bless it upon our hearts today. Thank you for how good you are to us. And Lord, now we come to you at this time for the offering. And Lord, we're just amazed at your goodness to us in that realm as well. I pray that you'd take it and use it, dear Lord, for your glory to get the gospel to the people who need it. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.
We're going to join her as she continues to play He Hideth My Soul, song 385. You can remain seated. We'll lift it up in that first verse. Oh, wonderful Savior, I don't 
Well, praise the Lord. There was a, a preacher that I've heard preach many times, and uh, he went to the restroom, and on the stall, somebody had etched in there, which I don't recommend, but he had scratched in there, Jesus is the answer, somebody he had seen. Well, then somebody came after that and etched in there, what's the question? And this was a respected pastor, and he said, I shouldn't have done it, but I etched in there, it doesn't matter what the question was, because Jesus is the answer. So if he's in your life, you've got all that you need to overcome whatever is coming at you. Pastor John, you don't know what's coming at me. I don't have to know what's coming at you. If I know that if, if you know who Jesus is, you've got the wherewithal to get it done. Thank God for that. Thank you, Maddie. Well, I'm excited to preach this morning. I want to preach. It is to fathers, but it's applicable to everybody. And so it's certainly not a father's only message because obviously everybody is not a father. But I want to preach something from the life of David. You know, if you were able, and there's books about, written about different people who were giving their last words. There's compilations of last words of saints and sinners and how many people who were so fervent in their hatred for God in their last moments had said some questioning statements that indicated that they were not as sure as they acted like all of those years. And so there's other testimonies of people who have been loving the Lord for years and then they go and how calm those things are. There's a great interest that we have when people are ready to cross over. How are they thinking? How are they feeling? And I want to preach about that from the Word of God, of course, but about David, the man after God's own heart. David, the one that God was, his cho he was a, a chosen vessel. And I want you to look in 1 Kings chapter number 2. We'll read the first three verses. 1 Kings is not too far into the Old Testament there. While you find your place, I don't have a joke to tell you today. Uh, it is Father's Day or a story, I tell you. I don't have that. But I thought in honor of Father's Day, you know, they get a bad rap. I am a father. I'm going to be a granddad. I'm looking forward to all of those things. But uh, sometimes dads get a bad rap for telling jokes. I know nobody in this room would tell lame dad jokes. I heard one this morning. So I guess I do know one person does. But so in honor of Father's Day, I've got a few of them for you here. So number one, I just heard this Jim this morning and made the person who told me hang his head in shame. What do you call a priest that goes to law school? A father-in-law. <laughs> a son asked his dad, Dad, can you explain what a solar eclipse is? And the dad answered back, no, son. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> how does, how does, they, the f dad asked, how, how does NASA organize a party? Well, it's easy, they plan it. <laughs> and then the last one, so you don't throw me out, how, what was more useful than the first telephone, the second telephone? <laughs> Obviously, you got to have another one to go back and forth with, so. Happy Father's Day to you. Second, first Kings chapter 2. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. He charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. That will be my title here in just a moment. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. So meaning wherever you go, keep those testimonies, keep those laws, keep those commandments, those judgments. I want to preach from verse number two, the title, Show Thyself a Man, but again to everyone in here. Father, be with us now is our prayer. Thank you for the time to gather. Lord, may we get some things down in our hearts. We're in desperate need of some people who would be willing to help change and mold and instruct people coming after them. Bless those folks to come from this room, I pray, and the ones that are listening and watching right now. In Jesus' name, amen. As we celebrate Father's Day, we get to look at the biblical admonition that David, the man after God's own heart, gives to his son Solomon, the advice that's giving, given, given him. I was sitting at my desk sometime back, and sometimes I'll put change in this little, uh, little tray there in the front of the desk if I've got too much in my pocket. So I had a lot for that for, for some reason. I went to put it in there, but I hit the desk as I was turning to put it down in there, and it just fell on the floor, probably on that chair mat underneath where I sit. And I was reminded immediately of my papa, who he went to heaven when I was about six, 
but he would come in and he would get uh, all this change and we kids would gather around and he'd just drop it on that l linoleum floor they had there in their front room and it would just bounce and go and we were like you ever seen that game Hungry Hungry Hippos where you press that button those little hippos and so we were like that Hungry Hungry Grandchildren so we would just go and grab it and put our pockets sometimes we thought he just had that much change but there were silver dollars and things in there he just wanted to be a blessing to him that was a, a lot of money that if, if he was a kid getting that much, that would have been amazing that he'd never had that much probably at, his, at our age. But I'm thinking about the memories of a granddad, memories of a dad. Many of you, hopefully, you're thinking of some things that are uh, that just permanently etched up there, some thoughts that you have of somebody that meant so much to you. And I'm afraid that us daddies and moms and grandparents, we're forgetting how much of an impact that we can have on those coming after us. Sometimes we get weary in the way. Sometimes we get tired of just, uh, just, just fighting. Sometimes we get tired of having that position and we want to step back from it from a little bit. But I want you to see what David is telling Solomon as he's getting ready to go on to the other side. And he says these thing, words, says, show thyself a man. And I want you to look at verse number three, though, and I give you my first point. He tells him that you need to live your life by the book. He says in verse three that keep the charge of the Lord, walk in his ways, keep his statutes, commandments, judgments, testimonies, the law. And all of those things referring to the word of God, he says that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest. David tells Solomon, be sure that you live in that book. Maybe in that scroll at that point. Make sure you live in the Word of God. And if you're going to be somebody, and I'm going to be somebody who touches the lives and am, and am worthy to touch the life of other people, then I have to be somebody who has a sure foundation. I have to be somebody who's living in the Word of God. And I'm afraid sometimes that we think, oh, that's for the older crowd. And yes, it is. But I'm thinking of teenagers in this room, and I'm thinking of, of college students in this room. Where are those young people who would stand up and say, I'm going to live my life on the book? Because you, my friend, and I need something that does not change. If you have creeds and you have, uh, and you have um, some groups and you have some uh, policies, all those are subject to change. But David is telling Solomon to live, keep the charge of the Lord, walk in his precepts, keep his statutes and his commandments and the law of Moses. He's telling them, telling him rather, that he needs to be living in the Word of God. And I only give you the same message that David gave Solomon that day that we need to be those that live in the Word of God regardless of your age. I stand here. And all the precepts that the Word of God gives. Kevin Long played for the Titans some time ago and he would tell of his coach when he was in college, Bobby Bowden, the famous football coach at Florida State. He said coach would inspire us with different stories and he of course loved football but he also played some baseball in college and Bowden would tell the men this story. He said, I, up to that point, I never hit a home run, and I wanted to. He said, I never did, but finally on the one day, I got it right down, uh, right down the right field, and he said, so I rounded first, and I was watching the coaches, and uh, uh, the base coach, and he motioned me on, and so I rounded second, he motioned me on, I rounded third, and I went home, and everybody was high-fiving and, and, uh, and cheering him. But he said that they threw the ball in to the infield and finally the pitcher got it and the pitcher threw it to the first baseman. He tagged the base and the umpire called him out. And Bowden said, it does, if you don't take care of the first, it doesn't matter what you do. And you say, well, that's not a Bible message. Well, that's not a Bible message, but that's a Bible principle because you take care of things in order. The Lord says that whatsoever thy hand find to do, do it with thy might. And there's great principles that are taught that oftentimes sports are a great avenue to teach those principles if people keep uh, the right uh, priority or the right emphasis on things and I'm saying to you as that coach told his uh, players that day that you've got to take care of first things first and what I'm telling our church today is that we must take care of first things first and I don't care how talented we are I don't care how whimsical we are I don't care how charismatic we are instead all of those things may be fine that we can use that charisma we can use that talent we can use that ability for the Lord yes but what you and I have to do and especially you 
fathers is you need to build your life on the Word of God. Say that what it says, I believe. If you're a college-age kid in here, may you be the oddball in your class. May you be the, uh, the, the, the minority. May you be the uh, exception, not the rule. I understand that. But may you still with fervency say, I will build my life on the book. This world with its winds that blow anywhere and everywhere needs to see somebody, as David told Solomon, to walk in his ways, keep his statutes, and obey his commandments. But not only that, look at verse number four that we didn't read. Not only do we need to live by the book, but look as he tells him to instruct the next generation. He says, take the Lord, that, that the Lord may continue his word, which he spake concerning me, saying, if thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart, with all their soul. There shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. He was a man that was told by his daddy to not only live by the book, but also instruct the next generation. He said, Solomon... He said, God told me that if we would walk in his precepts and teach the ones that come after us, there would never fail a person to sit on the throne. Now, if you would read later verses 5 to 9, you'll find there's some pretty tough commands that are going to be given to Solomon. But as he's telling him, he says, listen, you're going to have to instruct and invest the next generation. And if you and I are praying for children and grandchildren and nieces and nephews and whoever they are, can I just tell you a couple things that you need to do while you try to instruct them. You don't just go whimsical and, and haphazard and just say, well, whatever happens will happen. No, you've got to, number one, live before them in an appropriate way. I know that there are many Christians that we just wish everybody would quit looking at us. But my friend, that's not going to happen. People are watching you. You are a testimony. I don't know if we're good ones or not, but we're a testimony. They already know enough about you. They already know there's something that you go to church. They already know you saw you with a Bible verse or they saw this, they saw that. But what they also will see is this week, if I blow my stack and say things I ought not, they see that as well. I'm saying that if I'm going to instruct the next generation, I'm going to have to invest in them. I'm not only have to do that, I'm going to have to live before them, but I'm going to have to lead them to God. I'm going to have to lead them as, as, a, uh, as a shepherd would lead his sheep to the, to, the, to the water supply. We're going to have to lead them to the Lord. Maybe literally lead them to the Lord in salvation. But if not, at least show them how the world, the Lord rather, works in our life. I don't care how old you are. Please don't buy into dev the devil's lie that nobody's watching what you do anymore. My, oh my, how we need the older generation that you feel like you've been left out of everybody's view, but you have not. P folks are watching you and you have no clue that they are. And they need to see you lead folks to the Lord in the way you work. They need to see some grandmas and they may not always come by as often as they should. And they may not always call in as much as they should. But they know that she's going to her knees. They know that she's going to prayer. They're, they know that she is leading them to the Lord. And then also we need to labor in prayer. There are some of us have given up because we don't have a relationship with the people. We can't go to see them anymore. Literally, they won't allow it or whatnot. But can I tell you, where your presence cannot go, your prayers cannot be hindered. Amen. Where your body cannot go and minister in person, God will help and work and use you in the avenue of prayer. There is no door that can be shut against your prayers. There is no, there is no force field that can be against those. My friend, we're going to have to labor in prayer. Somebody told me not too long ago about their child that's far away from God and we agreed together to pray for them because where your presence cannot go, my friend, your prayers can. And we've got to instruct this next generation. And David is telling Solomon, he says, make sure if we teach you and I, you teach them and we go on and, and we all know that the, the people of God, the Israelites, they were a train wreck. Seemed like as soon as they got things going for them, they'd hit some other uh, trap and they'd get bad again. But they still had the promise of God and they still have it today. We ought to instruct the next generation to follow through. I read a story some time ago about the 1968 Olympics. A guy named John Aquari came from Tanzania to compete in Mexico. That was where they were held. 
he had taken a nasty fall and there were some, even some dislocations in his body and he was very slow. People tried to get him to stop, but he would not. And so he finished the race that he was in. Most everybody had cleared out. He was over an hour after everybody else. Hardly anybody was there, but he finally crossed the finish line. There was one person there that was left to interview him. He said, I can't believe you finished this race. And he said this, I'm quoting, My country did not send me 10,000 miles to start the race. They sent me 10,000 miles to finish the race. And you say, Pastor, I don't need a Bible to tell you to finish stuff. Well, we do need to have something that's strong and concrete to go back to because the Bible is very clear that whatsoever thy hand finds to do, do it with thy might. Whether therefore you eat or drink or do whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. And my friend, you and I have to be willing to take it on the chin and instruct the next generation. That man, John Aquari, he so much wanted to lead next generations that he lent his name to a foundation that was helping athletes as they trained to do more for their sport. But I think about David telling Solomon, if thy children, and you can hear that, you can hear that grandfatherly tone, if only your children could get taught by you and then Lord willing there, or if God would help him, then their children be taught by them. But my friends, somewhere or another, we have wanted to pull out of the equation and we don't want to instruct people anymore. We don't want people looking at us. You've got older folks that were now in heaven, but they were older when you were coming up in the faith, right? That you're looking back at and say, boy, they were a great testimony. Well, where are those great testimonies at? I tell you where they're at. They need to be right here. We need to be willing to be living such a life that people can look at us and say, that's how to live. And number three, we did not read verse 11 and 12, but I bring it to you now. And the days that David reigned over Israel were 40 years. Seven years reigned he in Hebron for the first few years, and then 33 years and reigned in Jerusalem. Then sat Solomon upon the throne of David his father, and his kingdom was established greatly. David and then Solomon, but David left a legacy. Not only did he build it, tell him that you got to build your life on the book and instruct those coming, but then he left a legacy. You ought to live in such a way that your children know and not have to apologize for how you lived. I want my children and my grandchildren, I want to be able to hold their head up and say, well, dad was whoever he was, but one thing about it, he was faithful to the Lord. I was overwhelmed just recently, just a few days ago, with how much responsibility is on me. Not because I pastor this church, not because of a, a lot of other things that you might immediately think of, but because of my children. How I need to stand for them, and, or stand for the Lord rather, in front of them. So they may not always like how you, what you stand for. They may not always appreciate how you do it, but they certainly appreciate, they should appreciate how the fact that you do stand and I'm looking at this and I'm seeing that Solomon is told by David to leave a legacy. I'm told that the last book that Mark Twain read was the French Revolution written by a guy named Thomas Carlyle. The story is odd and, 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 and inspiring. Thomas Carlyle finished a book and he gave it to a friend of his, John Mill. This book, The French Revolution, which was printed, uh, published back in 1835-ish, 1836, and it was the first of three in a volume set. But he left this book to John Stuart Mill. He asked him to read it and see what he thought. Mill read it and he loved it. But it was in manuscript form. It was just there. And he left it beside of his reading chair. When he came back the next time, the maid had found it. And she thought it was trash. And so the room was cold. She started a fire with it and with some other paperwork that was there. Mill said, this day I will never forget, March 6, 1835, he went back to Carlisle, who'd written the manuscript, and told him that it was destroyed. Fearing the worst from his friend, he thought, oh, he's going to be so upset. But Car Carlisle said this, quote, well, the manuscript is gone, so I better start writing again. <laughs> and he did. He finally completed it, and after much trouble, and it was, like I said, the first in three but I'm looking at folks that you may be thinking, I've blown it too much, Pastor. I've quit more times than I've started. I've got more bad example or more uh, bad traits than I do good. 
I've blown it so many times I can't keep count, neither can my family. Well, I would give you the same advice or I'd give you the same story that Carlisle, we gave about him in this book when he said, well, the past is the past. The manuscript's gone, so I better start writing again. I hope that nobody in this room would get to a place where they say, well, I've blown it too many times. You find in the Bible where you've blown it too many times for the Lord to work on your life. My friend, he is faithful. As Maddie sang just a little bit ago, talking about that aspect of we've, we've gotten broken. We've gotten some things that didn't turn out. But I know who Jesus is and he can redo what I've messed up. Don't ever buy into the devil's lie where you're too far gone. My friend, God works well when people doesn't think, don't think he can. And so I'm looking at this, that this person is told by David to leave a legacy. And maybe you've blown it. Maybe your reputation is not what you should. Please don't sit there in your ashes and say there's nothing I can do. Dust yourself off today and say God help me now to go leave a legacy for the people who's coming behind me. We see this bird's eye view of David talking to Solomon and he said we're interested in affecting the next generation and if there's one thing that we need in this age that we live it's for people to affect those coming after us. But sometimes we get so leery of it, we just won't allow ourselves to engage with anybody that's less than 25 years of age or something. You say, well, how would I even get started, Pastor? Can I tell you one thing that's a good way to get started? When you go look at a group of folks that are all younger than you, don't just assume that the next generation, they don't have anything and they're not worth investing in anyways. Because I'm encouraged by young people. Some of them went on our mission trip just, they got back last night. Others that are serving around in, the, uh, in our world already and, and some that are training to do that. I'm encouraged because there are people who are wanting to rise up in this wicked world that we live in. And they're wanting to make some change for the Lord Jesus Christ and wanting to bring people to faith in Christ. I, my friend, I'm challenging you not to broad brush everybody and say there's none of them that want to do anything. They may not, but it may be because we don't invest our lives into their life. If God's given you children, grandchildren, whether they're yours or you just have influence with them, would you do as David told Solomon and show thyself a man or, or a lady? Would you live by the book? Whatever your children, grandchildren think about you, may they know that you, you are governed by that book that you hold in your lap. May you instruct the next generation. May you help them. You say, Pastor, I'm not a teacher. I'm not a I don't have a title. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a you don't need any of that. Some of the greatest uh, influences on the lives of people right now hold no title. They just want to put, invest in people. And then as you and I go off the scene, may we leave a legacy to those that follow behind. My friend, this world needs to see some dads and some moms and some aunts and some uncles, some teachers, some uh, instructors, some mentors, some disciplers. They need to see somebody who's rooted in the Word of God. They're going to stay strong and then they're willing to teach those coming after. Well, you say, what would we teach them? Well, the very first thing you teach them is that Jesus Christ has got to be what you build your life on just like you, the teacher, are building their life on. Would you take that challenge? So today, if you take that challenge, I'm going to ask everybody to make a commitment to the Lord. Lord, use me to help in the lives of other people. You say, are, are you, or am, am, should I expect some kind of uh, classification or some type of title or some kind of position here at the church or some ministry? Not necessarily. Just ask God, help me to influence people for your good and your, with your word. And then if you're here today, and maybe you say, Pastor, all that sounds good. But you keep talking about Jesus Christ and I'm not even sure that I know, I know who he is, but I don't know if I know him personally. And my friend, the re reason this church exists is to instruct people in the gospel. And that's the story of the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. And if you're in here and you need Jesus as your Savior, 
my friend, today is the best day that you could accept him for the forgiveness of your sins. Would you bow your heads together with me in prayer as the ladies come to play? And maybe there's somebody today that the Lord has instructed you that there's someone that you need to help in their walk with God. Maybe they're not even saved yet. But you need to help them as they walk toward that and they need to walk and be saved. I'm challenging everybody to make a commitment to the Lord that you would see change. You'd be that one that affects change. You'd see change in the lives of people as they begin to play. If God's speaking to your heart, I challenge you just to make a commitment to Him. Lord, I'll do it. As David told Solomon, build your life on the book. Lord, I'll build my life on the book. As David told him to instruct the next generation, Lord, you'll give me an opportunity. I don't know how to make it happen, but I'll instruct them. And then I'll leave a legacy. May not be a temple. May not be seen of man. But with God's help, it'll be seen. If you're here today and God's instructing you to do that, don't, don't ignore that. Right there. There's people that need us. People in this, our world, right here around us, that need the people in this room to build on the book, to instruct them, and leave a legacy. Would you take that challenge? If you're here this morning and you're that second group that you're not sure that you are saved. Brother Daniel's right in front of the pulpit. Would love to take a Bible and show you how you can be saved. You say, well, I don't want to come forward. People might think fun of, make, think you love me or make fun. My friend, there's nothing you could do that would make this crowd happier than to accept Christ as your Savior. Nothing. You couldn't bring $100,000 down and put it in this offering plate. We wouldn't like that as much as we'd like for you to get saved. You couldn't, you couldn't promise to pay for every building that I want to build on this property and make us as happy as it would make us if you'd get saved. Let's get first things first. As the Lord works on your heart and to give people just an opportunity to come out of their pew a little easier if you're able to, would you stand together with me? Maybe it's one of the things I mentioned you want to come pray about. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's something totally different. The altar is open for you. You're welcome to come pray at these steps. Maybe you need to join Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church. God's been nudging you to do that. Why don't you come and talk to Brother Daniel and present yourself for membership. Maybe you need to be baptized. I'm going to go back and baptize right now. One young man that knows Christ. Keaton. Wonderful little fella. Wants to follow Christ in baptism. Maybe you need to make some other spiritual decision. The altar is open for you.
this way. And if you need to leave, I know you, it's 12 o'clock. I know sometimes there's schedules are pressing, but if you need to slip out, you, you're welcome to do so. We're going to have baptism here in just a few moments. And, uh, but you can be seated if you're able to. And we're going to turn to song 391 while Pastor gets ready, sing a couple verses of trust and obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, let's lift it up on that first verse of that song together this morning. When we walk with the Lord in the light are shy when they get baptized, but Kate, Keaton is not. So I'm thankful for Keaton. He's trusted Christ as Savior. And uh, dad and granddad are over here. I guess I should turn this way. Turn you here. And, um, and uh, mom down here and grandma and aunt. And so we're so thankful that he wants to follow Christ in baptism. And it's a wonderful joy to see our children come to faith in Christ. And then also want to just take that step for the Lord. And uh, so, Keaton, because Jesus told us to, and the Bible says that after we get saved, we're supposed to get baptized. And so, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Can you hold your nose? Yeah. You let this arm down. I got you. Buried in baptism. <laughs> Raised to walk in newness of life. He fought me a little bit there. <laughs> Take a little extra work, get him down. But that's, that's just survival techniques kicking in. Thank you for being here today. What a joy. Happy Father's Day to each of us. And uh, thank you so much. Men, don't forget your duct tape's out there. And uh, you're welcome, by the way. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, Brother Kovach, would you mind sitting back to the lobby there by your table? I want you to get by and see this good missionary. Be back tonight if you're able to. Uh, we'll hear more about his ministry. We're looking forward to that. So, God bless you so much. Father, thank you so much for the day you've given to us today. Thank you for the privilege that we've had to be together in church. Lord, I pray that you would bless uh, bless fathers as they uh, go and spend time with family today. Lord, I pray uh, most of all, Lord, you'd bless the influence of fathers and men in our culture. We certainly need men to rise up and do their part. And Lord, I pray that you would bless this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being here today. You're dismissed.